Discord's new business. Customer 4, Pinkie Pie. Written by Jonathan Knight Mysterio Spires and read by Nathanor and Syrups. Howdy, Bill! I want to be Princess Pinkie Pie for the day. Pinkie Pie chirped. I love you. Discord said, cackling. I really do. Pinkie Pie beamed. <laughs> I know, she said. But since tonight's more of a flutter cord shipper, I know it's more of a platonic thing. I haven't even given you your powers yet, and you're already breaking the fourth wall. Discord said, pulling out a sheet of paper. Sign here, please. Pinkie Pie looked at the paper. Uh, what's this? Standard issue butt covering disclaimer for top tier transformations like Alogorn and Draconicus. Discord said. It says basically that you agree I'm not legally liable for whatever you do as an Alicorn, no matter how much damage is caused. Pinkie pouted. You didn't make Fluttershy sign. She protested. It's Fluttershy. Discord said. I'm surprised she had enough mischief in her to even set up that pro wrestling ring. Pinky smirked. You're a terrible influence, she said. Discord feigned dismay. <laughs> I know, and I feel so bad over it, he said. Pinky giggled. <laughs> okay, that's fair, she said, signing the paper. Discord rolled it up and put it in a drawer with other scrolls. He snapped his fingers, and Knight Mysterio appeared in front of him. A blue unicorn cult with his avatar from Fim Fiction as his cutie mark. What? Wait, how? He said, looking around, Discord snickered. <laughs> Funny word, snickered. Reminds me of snickerdoodles. Now I'm hungry. And said, It appears, my dear boy, that Princess Pinky had traded places with you for the day. Knight Mysterio made the most hilarious panic face you've ever did see. Even funnier than the Flower Trio's panic faces. Wait, Pinky controls the narrative now? For the next 24 hours in story time, yes. Discord said, making a watch appear out of nowhere to look at it. Night Mysterio looked really dazed. Um, I'm gonna hide in Shirkerfube Corner. Because Pinkie Pie has a job to do and isn't a Shirky Shirkinson. Ag Pinkie! Look, Knight, I promise I'll bring you back to reality once the story's over. It's my time, so I want to have fun, okay? But I don't want my job to go undone, either. You have my knowledge and skills now. I- Well, so that's how you work, Knight Mysterio said. But still! Knight, I've seen some of your art folders. I know you'd enjoy the idea of coming here. This isn't that kind of story! <laughs> Knight protested, making an adorable blush appear on his face. Yeah, I know, I'm just teasing. Ugh. Knight Mysterio said, making that cute scrunchy face I know the fans like. Fine, just don't break reality too much, okay? Cross my heart, hope to fly, stick a cupcake in my eye. I promise Equestria will be mostly intact by the end of the chapter. Knight Mysterio made a non-committal noise and went off to take my place for the day. <laughs> Meanwhile, I, Princess Pink Kamina Diane Pie, ruler of narratives and parties, put myself back in the narrative to have the best day ever! Oh, I should probably describe what I look like now, shouldn't I? Well, I pretty much look like me, but a little taller than Twilight. Plus, I've got a horn and pretty wings now. I kind of make my back feel a little tingly, though. Plus, I got an itch. Rolled over on the grass and wiggled about, using the ground to scritch my itch until it went away. I stood up again and tested my magic, picking up some rocks and juggling them. So cool! I turned the rocks into colorful balls and began to use my hooves to juggle them, turning a large conveniently placed boulder in a pink striped giant ball, hopping up onto it and rolling into town. Once I got to the center of town, I flipped off the ball, taking it to the air, and launched all the balls into the air, making a fireworks display. <laughs> it was awesome. Trixie would have been proud of me. Ta-da! I cheered. It's the end time! Screamed Lily. The big apocalypse has come! Screamed Rose Luck. Everybody for themselves! <laughs> screamed Daisy. And then they ran off, screaming in terror. And I have to say, I'm a little offended. Applejack trotted up to me. Hurry, we? Yo, she said. <laughs> I love her accent. Guess I shouldn't be surprised that you chose someone like this. And I smiled happily. <laughs> I know, right? Applejack smiled. What are y'all gonna do? She asked. I'm assuming something to do with parties. 
Well, duh, I said, giggling. I'm the absolute princess of parties now. I can't not hold a party. Applejack bit her lip. Did she have an itch? I know that sometimes when I have an itch. Well, I'm sure it'll be interesting, to say the least. <laughs> I've got a lot of expectations to live up to, that's for sure. I said. People have been wanting this chapter a lot, I bet. Applejack gave me a confused look. I forget sometimes that Discord and I are the only ones who can see the narrative, and even them, with me, it's a situational thing. Come to think of it, I think Twilight can too. After Magic Duel, she came into the iris with me and restored my mouth. Twilight! That's right! She should probably know about this! I gotta go, Applejack! See you at the party? I asked. Wouldn't miss it. <laughs> Applejack said, smiling. Before I teleported off, I thought I heard her mutter, Better bring the extra strong lasso. I don't, I don't get why she'd need it. Maybe she's planning on doing some rope tricks. Ooh, that'd be great. I should have set up a stage for her and... Right, Twilight. I vanish in a flash of confetti and reappear inside the castle. I don't appear right next to her, which was weird since I was wanting to go right to her. Instead, I appear outside her lab. Well, okay, that makes sense now. She must be doing some research or something, and I must have subconsciously wanted not to disturb her. Huh, did turning into an alicorn make my brain more mature? Because I have the weirdest feeling that I wouldn't have done that before. I would have just barged in and... Yeah, definitely more mature in this form. I'm starting to look back a lot on what I did, and I'm not really liking some of what I'm seeing. I knock on the door to her lab. I wait for her, hearing the clink of bottles being put down. She opens the door and looks surprised. Pinkie Pie, she said, looking me over. You knocked? Yep. Being Princess Pinkamina is making my brain more mature and stuff, I think. I said. Can I come in? I... How is that even... Stop it, Twilight Pinky Logic. Move on. Twilight said, looking frustrated. I pulled the cupcake out of my mane and offered to her, to her so she'd smile, which she did. I'm glad, because I don't like my friends having a sad face or a mad face. Thank you, Pinky, she said, eating the cupcake. Please, let's talk. Can I get you some tea? Nah, I said. That stuff gives me gas. You have chocolate milk or anything like that? Twilight nodded. Sure thing, let me go get it, she said, teleporting to the kitchen and reappearing with the drinks. Twilight and I walked into the lab. So, Alicorn, huh? She asked. I nodded. <laughs> yep, yep, I've never thrown a princess party as an actual princess, I said. I figure if I can do all sorts of cool stuff with my regular magic, I bet with an Alicorn's magic I could do something really cool. Twilight grinned, giving me my chocolate milk as she poured her tea. I'll bet, she said. Considering how much you defy physics already, it'll probably be a party that Equestrial will remember forever. Twilight's so nice, and so encouraging too. Thanks, Twilight, I said, giving her a hug and picking up my cup of milk. I freely admit I gulped down my chocolate milk. <laughs> I love chocolate milk. I convinced Discord to give me my own personal chocolate milk cotton candy rain cloud a few days after he reformed. <laughs> I keep it in my room. I named it Cecil von Cloudington IV. Donkey names are so silly. Did you know that Cranky named that one changeling who attended his wedding Kevin? He's all colorful now like the rest of Thorax's changelings. Anyway, getting off topic. So is there anything I could help you with? Twilight asked. Yeah, actually, I said. I was wondering if there was any spells I could borrow to make the party even more super fliffatastic. Super fliffatastic's not a word, Pinky, Twilight said. I'm a princess now, so I say it is, yes, I declared. You're a princess for a day. I'm the princess of nerds forever, and I say it isn't. Twilight countered. <laughs> I laughed. I couldn't help it. Okay, I'm so gonna tell Rainbow Dash you said that, I said. Twilight laughed as well. I think I have a few spells that will liven up your party a little, she said. Let me go look for them real quick. I nodded. Can I help? I asked. I noticed a spell on a torn scroll in the corner. Ooh, hey, what's this? All the words and stuff looked interesting, and thanks to my newly enhanced alicorn brain, I think I got how to cast them. No, wait, Pinkie Pie, that's the- Twilight said. I didn't hear the rest of what she said. I had already started casting the spell, and it had sent me somewhere I didn't know where it was. It looked like the Everfree Forest, but that was weird, because I could have sworn I was just in Ponyville. <laughs> oh well, I flew up above and looked around. The mountain looked kind of familiar, but that little rinky-dink city coming out of the side of the mountain couldn't be Canterlot. <laughs> there was no castle. Still, new friends are new friends, so I flew over to say hello to everyone. I landed what looked like the town square. There were earth ponies and pegasuses and unicorns. Plus, there was a glowing crystal in the shape of a blue heart and a heart-shaped flame above it. The blue heart looked kind of like the crystal heart. Maybe there was more than one? I shrugged and moved on. The other ponies seemed afraid of me, but I started singing a song to relax them. <laughs> you know the one, bronies.
My name is Pinkie Pie, and I'm here to say I'm gonna make you smile and I will brighten up your day. It took me a bit longer than usual to get a full chorus going, but I did! <laughs> Once I was done, everyone seemed a lot happier and relaxed. <laughs> I wasn't surprised. A good musical number always makes me feel better. Now that everyone wasn't afraid of me, I went to help anyone who needed it. I ended up doing a lot of manual labor using my magic to help build houses and such. <laughs> Unicorn magic is really convenient. I was setting up some playground equipment for some foals when a bunch of guards came. With them were some very important looking ponies. One was an earth pony like I am normally. She kind of reminded me of a female cheese sandwich except with colors reversed, brown coat, orange mane and tail. She wore a robe and had a delicious looking fresh pudding on her head. Pudding head? That seems oddly important for some reason. Huh. <laughs> Anyway, the others. One of them was a unicorn with the most gorgeous coloring. She had a curved horn like Sombra's except not menacing, and a platinum colored coat, mane, and tail. She was wearing a beautiful cloak like some of Rarity's best work and a crown. There was also a Pegasus there. He was a big guy, built like a fusion of Big Macintosh and bulk biceps with gold-lined iron armor on. His face was scarred and his coat was gray, his tail and mane a stark white. There was another unicorn there, he was robed like an earth pony in the female unicorn, but he had a huge long curly beard and a big wide brimmed hat. Like Trixie's! <laughs> Except he had bells all along the brim of the hat! <laughs> I bet he's a lot of fun. My lady, the bearded unicorn said, it is the greatest honor to receive you here this day. Or maybe not, he and the other ponies bowed to me. Ah, please don't do that, I said. I think I'm starting to realize how Twilight feels when ponies bow to her. This didn't feel comfortable at all. I'm only like this for the day, anyway. The Platinum Unicorn looked up, confused. For the day, a polymorphic spell has made you this way? <laughs> yep! A friend of mine is running a business where he can transform you to anything he wants for a single day! She said. I wanted to be an alicorn, and now for the day, I'm Princess Pinkie Pie, Equestria's royal party pony. That made all of them look up. The Equestria, you say? The scarred Pegasus said. <laughs> yep, yep, I said. It's the greatest! An entire kingdom founded on friendship and harmony, and I've got lots of friends too! Earth ponies and pegasuses, and unicorns and dragons and minotaurs and changelings and griffins and zebras! Changelings, eh? The pegasus said. I was worried, as some of our advisors have been expressing anti-changeling sentiment. With that young queen recently being born, Chrysalis I think her name is, I was worried that the next generation might turn against them. Chrysalis? <laughs> Can't be. Probably an inherited name. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about that, but changelings are everypony's friends where I come from. You sound like someone I'd get along with greatly. Said the earth pony wearing the snack on her head. But Equestria is really such a place? All are accepted there? For the most part, yeah. My hometown Ponyville is a really nice place. Especially considering it's near the Everfree Forest, I said. The Pegasus grinned at that, giving a smug look to the bearded unicorn. So, Everfree can be tamed, the bearded unicorn said, stroking his beard. Most interesting. We do get the occasional monster attack, I said, but me and my friends can deal with them. The Pegasus nodded. So, you and your friends are monster hunters? Nope, I plan parties and my other friends are an animal caretaker, a professional racer, a weather manager, fashion designer, apple farmer, and a librarian, I clarified. The platinum unicorn looked confused. Fashion designer? <laughs> She asked. She makes clothes. I have the most beautiful dress made by her. And she's so nice and generous too, always willing to lend a hoof. The Earth Pony giggled. Sounds like you have interesting friends. It really is. And my librarian friend, she actually became an alicorn for realsies. Not because of a spell, but, but because she earned it for being so awesome, I said. That startled all of them. Tell me, the bearded pony said, who rules Equestria? And I blinked. Did they really not know? Uh, Princess Celestia and Princess Luna, of course. Princess Celestia is so very wise and smart, she taught my librarian friend about the magic of friendship. The bearded unicorn scoffed. Don't be so quick to dismiss it! The platinum unicorn said, grinning and looking at me. What of Princess Luna? That was a weird way of saying princess. Huh, anyway. Oh, she guards every pony's dreams. She raises the moon every night and keeps watch over the dreamscape. The earth pony cackled. <laughs> I knew those two fillies had a lot of potential, she said, sayingly. Huh? I asked, confused. Anyway, there's also the Crystal Empire in the North. An empire in the North? 
The Pegasus asked, looking worried. No, it's really a nice place, I said, not wanting him to be concerned. It's ruled by an alicorn of love and kept warm and cozy by this thing called the Crystal Heart. Kinda looks like the crystal under a heart-shaped fire. Four? The Platinum Unicorn said, breathlessly. Uh, five now, I clarified. She had a baby recently. The four important-looking ponies began to chat amongst themselves. Their faces were all smiles, and they looked like their day was going well because of what I said. <laughs> I'm glad. I like it when I make ponies happy. Yes. At that point, though, magical sparks started dancing around me. What's going on? The bearded beardicorn asked. I'm being called back to where I came from, I think. I said. Bye-bye. It was nice meeting you all. Princess, know that on this day you have given us all hope when our doubts were flagging. Equestria stands! The bearded beardicorn said, and that was the last thing I heard before I was called back, reappearing in Twilight's lab. Pinky, are you alright? She asked, hugging me. What happened? Where did you go? I grinned. <laughs> I don't know, but I made some new friends. There was this earth pony with a pudding on his head, a big old pegasus with a scarred face and some really cool looking armor, a unicorn with a beautiful platinum coat, and a unicorn with bells on his hat and this really epic beard. Twilight's jaw dropped. She'd better close it quick, otherwise she might catch bugs. Huh? I asked. Pinky, you went back in time and met three of the founders of Equestria. Ah! Twilight said. Really? I said. And then it all clicked. Yes. Oh wow, I met Chancellor Pudding Head, Commander Hurricane, and Princess Platinum. That must mean the bearded unicorn was... Star Spell the Bearded! <laughs> Twilight squeed, grinning so widely it looked like her head had developed a flip top. Oh, you have to tell me about him. What was he like? Eh, pretty formal, I said. I didn't have that much time to talk with him. Oh. Twilight said, looking disappointed. She brightened up again, though. Still, Pinky, this means that you inadvertently played a part in Equestrian history. <laughs> I grinned. Wow, that's cool. Can you tell me anything more about the Founders? Twilight asked. I thought for a moment. Actually, can I wait until the party tonight? I think the others are going to wait to hear about... I think the others are going to want to hear about this, too. Good point. Twilight said. Great, see you then. I said, okay, Knight, you can have the narrative back. Thank you. Okay. As Pinkie Pie hopped off to finish planning her party, Starlight Glimmer poked her head in. Did I hear right? She asked. Did Pinkie really go to pre-Equestria Equestria? Twilight giggled. Yep, she never ceases to amaze me. She said. She's going to tell us about her, the party she's throwing tonight. Starlight looked thoughtful. Man, I better go get my costume for it, she said. Twilight blinked. Planning on using your freebie? She asked. Starlight nodded. And I think I know what I want to try being. 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 To be continued.